Sam Ludby Steins has been in the studio with me many times. Uh, sometimes happy times, sometimes sad times, sometimes very difficult times, particularly through the times um, of the very public illness and death of her husband Jim, the Melbourne footballer, Brownlow medalist, Melbourne president, and good man. Sam is in the studio with me again, and it's a good time. Hi, Sam. Good morning. You're married. <laughs> yeah, I sure married. am. I know. <laughs> I sort of forget that sometimes, but I, I am. I definitely am. Yeah, it doesn't feel like um, a big deal to me, but it is a big deal. I am married and it's great. When? April this year. Yes. Who? Mr. Jeff Paws, Melbourne uh, uh, property developer, I guess you'd classify him as. And Melbourne supporter. And huge Melbourne supporter. That's yeah. a pity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I have to <laughs> persevere with Melbourne for the rest of my life. <laughs> the, um, did you feel, you haven't talked about it publicly before, did you feel pressure after such a public nature of Jim's illness and death and, and sort of being, rem being forever referred to as Jim Stein's widow, did you feel a, a pressure, a public pressure about marrying? Yeah, of course. Because I feel a great responsibility to carry on Jim's legacy as best as I can. Um, you know, whatever I can do to do that and also um, the children to do that. And at the same time, I figured I sort of have to have my own life as well. So I think being quiet about it also shows a level of respect for Jim and people that love Jim and his family and his friends and also shows a level of respect for my new husband and his children and his ex-wife and because it's a very sensitive topic and not just for me but for everyone around me around Jeff around Jim so the this the quietness was just um, wanting to respect everyone involved not everybody embraced it enthusiastically why uh, I, I've had a little bit more of a think about that and I think it just has to come down to grief because everyone grieves in their own way and I think perhaps um, me making a decision to forge and carve out a new life for myself, uh, perhaps that, you know, distills Jim's memory for people that may have had difficulty with me making those choices. But some, some friends, in fact, were quite, un, well, not unpleasant, but quite critical of you? Yeah. and um, How did you handle that? I lost my temper and uh, screamed down a phone and yelled and cried. And I was quite, a f <laughs> looking back, it was quite funny because then I actually walked into where I was having my dress made straight after that phone call and I was shaking and I was teary and um, um, the beautiful... Um, lady who did my dress made me a cup of tea and <laughs> settled me down and um you know she was like just relax you know she was great i find it disappointing because it and, and we've we've all we've seen that happen before i'm with friends who, who remarry and children don't talk to them that sort of thing but i find it disappointing because surely it's your business it's entire and everybody wishes you and people in a position like you happiness yeah um i think we chatted about briefly the other day that um it's it's a really difficult place to be in because if you don't recover um, well enough, um, I find people can be critical because then they say, well, you need to move on and be, you have to be strong and you can get through this. And um, people can judge people that don't move on fast enough. And then if you do move on, you can be judged anyway because you are moving on too fast. So I think a lot of the time um, in situations where someone dies, for the person that's left behind, it's a very very difficult scenario to be in because you sort of can't win if you worry about what everyone around you thinks. Have you forgiven those who were critical? Yeah, of course. You've made up? Yes. Yeah, we've made up. Mm. Definitely. Um, I respect um, their opinions, and um, but it, I wouldn't let that stop me from doing what I choose to do with my life. And um, I think the learning is no one should really judge anyone else because unless you've walked in their shoes or you've had a really similar situation, if you've lived through it, you wouldn't judge. Um, I would never judge anyone ever who's lost a partner, who's moved on, ever. One of the most supportive was Jim's mum. Yeah, she's been fantastic. What did she say? 
Uh, I think it was more her body language. She took my hand and she just looked me in the eye. And, you know, she's an Irish mum that's raised six kids and been completely committed to her children and her husband. And she's a marvellous lady. And um, she just said, uh, now's your time. You've done your bit and um, move on. Build, rebuild a new life for yourself. Mm. And and they get on well with your new husband. Yes, yeah. I, I think um, I think they might like Jeff a bit more than me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, were you surprised to find yourself in this position? I mean, of uh, of finding you must have some stage thought you know I'll, I'll never be happy again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I felt I probably felt um, I probably felt a little bit guilty and surprised and yeah sought the opinion of my mum and stepdad and once they met Jeff and um they just said to me to you know you're like-minded he's a great bloke and um you know you could put it on ice for a year or two until um perhaps people think it's appropriate timing for you to move on um but then my stepdad said don't just go for it one life life can be short it's yeah. just something you know well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Didn't want to waste time. So you're happy with life? Very happy. I'm really happy. I'm the happiest I've been in a long time. I felt normal just recently. Felt normal? Yeah. What again, again, like before I guess Jim was diagnosed with cancer because the day that happened, um, it was like someone pulled a rug out from underneath our lives. So I feel like the rug's back down there, but I know it's, you know, it can be, <laughs> it can shift any time. So... I'm a bit wary, but I'm really happy. I'd like to get to some of the things you're doing with, with your life in a moment, but to look back on those days, it was so public um, from his illness, from his fight, and I remember coming in here with Olivia Newton-John and everything else, and then and him carrying on over her like a dill, and then uh, <laughs> right through to the very public funeral, and I'll always have the image of you standing out the front waving uh, after the funeral service. Do you regret it being so public? No, no regrets. Must have made it tougher. It def it definitely made it tough. But look, I think by that time, I think I'd spent would have been thirteen years with Jim by that stage. So I thought, well, if it's doing some good for uh, other people that are going on a cancer journey, um, you know, it's a good thing. And I think by that stage, it's sort of like, well, if you can't beat it, you may as well join it. So I thought it was important that I supported Jim and and did what I could to support that process as well for him. Any regrets about those days? No regrets. I think um, we were pretty good at um, sort of taking time, just the two of us, when we had to. I mean, sometimes were tough. I mean, you know, when Jim wanted to do the documentary on his journey and having um, that happen behind closed walls in our home could be tough. Uh, but no regrets. Um, I've had so many just beautiful people um, approach um, me and back when Jim was still alive um, and uh, have great chats about, you know, what journeys they were also going on and how that um, assisted them with keeping up the good fight. That's so, the important part of it, isn't it? That yeah. You know that there are many people who have been through it or are going through it at this very moment and mm. the fact that somebody so well-known and so strong as, you, well, two of you, yourself and mm. Jim, can talk about it probably helps them. Probably yeah, awesome. absolutely. Because it's easy to, you know, suffer from self pity and why me and and give up. So, but that that's not going to help. So that you actually have no choice except to be strong and uh, fight, fight on, do what you can. You've always been a strong person. Yeah, I guess so. I got a really strong mum. She role modelled that to me growing up, and uh, you know, went through a divorce when I was fifteen, and and mum, you know, went back to work. Um, financially it wasn't easy for her. So yeah, I've had really strong mum. She's a great role model. And, um, anytime I started to fall off the tightrope, she'd be, you know, you can do it. You're strong. You'll be right. So what did, you, what did you learn about yourself through the past four or five years? Oh, I've learned that I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, you know, as human beings, I mean, <sighs> Whatever we're faced with, I've learnt that, you know, and it's probably, it's probably a consequence of hanging out with Jim for so long. I mean, he, he lived it, he breathed it. You can overcome anything. You can do anything in your life if you put your mind to it and you work hard. 
and it's something you're passionate about. I mean, I don't mean unreal, unrealistic dreams like I'm going to go out there tomorrow and be a pop star type stuff, you know, at 44. But, you know, you can achieve pretty much um, anything you want. And fear is the main thing I think that um, holds any of us back. So if you can just um, overcome your fear, you can do anything. But it's uncomfortable and it's hard, but don't let that, I, I don't let that stop me. So tell me, what are you doing now, the Child Care Centre? Yes, which yes. Which I toured the other day. Yes, thank you. And will be, uh, I mentioned the film of it earlier, it'll be on Channel 9 News tonight. What, what, what's it about? What's it called? It's called Jumbo Early Education. And, so, and why? Well, well it's, our logo is a big, gentle, um, strong elephant. So uh, we tried to capture Jim's spirit in that little cute cartoon. So hence the name Jumbo, because Jim's nickname was often Jimbo Jumbo. And, uh, yeah, I've done the childcare. Jim and I had childcare interests when uh, Jim was alive, which is our bread and butter. And, uh, of course, when someone's dying, you have all those conversations about, you know, um, moving forward and how the kids and I would go financially, da-da-da-da-da. And um, Jim just said, look, you know, after I've gone, you know, start the business again, but do it on your own without without partners. Um and I thought I could never do it. And he said, of course you can. You're underestimating yourself. Don't be ridiculous. Um, so I have started again, except with a different focus. Um, we've, I've also just founded the Jim Steins Foundation, which is very exciting. And um, so I'm really keen for this business to work because I'd like the um, profits to go into the Jim Steins Foundation, which can then go back into the Reach Foundation or all different um, fabulous um, charitable causes. Um, so that's what it's all about. And I think I chose to do it because I was, uh, we chatted about, I was floundering about, uh, there's so many great causes. What will I support? And, um, and I thought, well, I'll just take control of, uh, sort of Jim's legacy myself. And, uh, hopefully I don't stuff it up because <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought, well, who's better to take control of it? Um, so here we go. So it's been in the in the making for a couple of years, a lot of hard work, and I had to go back to school and do some extra study. And uh, so here we are, but it's great. It's and very designed, exciting. And you designed it yourself? Yeah, right. I've done everything from designing the uh, interior, the exterior areas. Um, I went back and, you know, I've got a education master's, which is um, irrelevant now in childcare. So I had to go back and do a diploma of uh, early childhood at the Sage Institute, which I think everyone's heard the advertisements for that course. And when my girlfriend and I rocked up to do the course, she said, Sam, this is, she's also, you know, quite uh, qualified in lots of different areas. <laughs> and we were sitting in that course going, what are we doing here? And all the students called us Nana because we were like so old. Everyone was in their twenties. Um, yeah, but a lot of learning and, uh, making sure I knew what I was doing. So I just didn't want to jump into something too fast. So we're going to have a chain of these, are we? I hope so. Absolutely. Really? Yep. Yep. I'm going to give it a good crack for the next sort of seven to ten years. See well, how it goes. That far planned. All right. Yeah. Seven to, <laughs> seven to ten years, a jumbo. And, and this one's down on uh, Southall. Yeah. I'd like to think this is our legacy childcare. It's um, a, a beautiful space and... Uh, there's so much love and energy in there and um, the staff that are with us are, are fantastic. It's like a real family. And views of the Jim Steins Bridge. Yeah, that's a coincidence, but what a great one. So when the site became available, as soon as I realised it was across the river from the Jim Steins Bridge, I thought this is meant to be. And uh, that's when I felt he must be watching over us. And um, so that's a really nice touch. Are the kids, how are they? They're so good. They're great. I think they kept me going. I had to role model to the kids how to how to not sort of crash and burn, and they're great, well adjusted, beautiful natured kids. They're great. And you have a blended family. Yes, and my um, stepchildren, which feels a bit weird to say, but um, they're great kids too. Uh, Jeff and I are really fortunate that we've got five fabulous, um, soulful kids, and I think we're really fortunate with the age uh, the age gaps. So there's no two of the same age so there's no sort of sibling um, competition or anything so we're really fortunate and I think they're just all beautiful kids and so what are the ages from the top down uh, well Alex is turning 21 in November uh, Sam just turned 19 uh, Zoe's just about to turn 16 Matisse is 14 and uh, Tiernan's 10 so it's perfect spread <laughs> right. Well, look, congratulations I know they're happy I saw them the other day laughing and uh, and enjoying themselves and relaxed 
as I say, was also public, such a high-profile man, and now you, you remarry and very happy, which is great to see. But Jim, you said Jim's still with you. Yeah, he'll be in my heart and soul forever. And uh, I think what's special about my marriage to Jeff is uh, Jeff embraces that. And uh, I think we both acknowledge that, you know, when you come together with a second relationship, you both have pasts and... Um, it's important to acknowledge the people that have been in our life before we've met. So, um, yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, Jeff's so supportive of, you know, he helped me set up the foundation with all his sort of um, law expertise and his network of lawyers and everything. And, yeah, Jeff couldn't do more to be more helpful. So I'm really appreciative of that. And we're really lucky that we can both talk about our pasts and there's no sense of um, insecurity or jealousy. And... Uh, yeah, so he'll be with me forever. And I just hope I, that uh, the foundation, we can um, do him proud, you know, and continue help help to continue on his legacy, really do. You told me he his death left a hole in your heart. Is it still there? Yeah, I think anyone that's lost anyone they love, it never, never goes away. And I think uh, we chatted about that too. I think, you know, Trish Broadbridge... Um, told me early on that uh, when she lost Troy, and it's way over 10 years for Trish now, that um, she said, you don't ever sort of get over it. You learn to live with it. And that's been poignant to me. And I think that's just very true. And uh, you learn to live with it and you're always remembering and um, find, you know, remember all the good memories and the bad memories. And I go over it a lot in my head, a lot of the past, but um yeah, I think the the best way to honour Jim is to um, carve out a as best I can a um a life for myself and and the kids in honour of him because that's what he would he wanted me to do. I couldn't agree more, and you're doing that beautifully. Thank you for coming in. Thanks, and Neil. All the best with these projects. Keep in touch Thank about you. how it's going. Yes, absolutely. I look forward to the chain across Australia. Watch out! Send your grandkids. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Ludby Stein's back in a moment.